Most of us live in a nine-to-five world, and we're expected to be awake, alert, and functioning during that time, which means sleeping at night and waking up in the morning. Not everyone can do this. As a sleep specialist, I see many people who cannot fall asleep and wake up at quote-unquote normal hours. At night, their minds are busy, very productive, alert, creative, without coffee, buzzing at a time when everyone else wants to sleep. They're zombies in the morning. So they naturally feel sleepy at 1, 2, or 3 a.m., and when they sleep, they sleep well, but they wake up at midday. But since we live in a 9 to 5 world, they have to get up in the morning for work or school, they only get four or five hours of sleep, and are struggling the rest of the day. Mornings are particularly tough. Some use several alarms, they program their phones to ring every three minutes, they have this love affair with the snooze button, They ask family members and flatmates to physically get them out of bed. Daily battle, which includes water pistols, wet face cloths, and literally dragging bodies into the shower. And some even fall asleep in the shower. But because of their fatigue and poor functioning, they have been labeled as lazy, unmotivated, and even depressed. We call them night owls. In sleep medicine, we call them delayed sleep phase wake disorder. So let's just call them owls, (laughs) easier. Humans have a range of body clocks. We have owls, we have rare early birds, and most of you, most of us here are boring in the middle. We call the in-betweeners. Even among owls, you have the hardcore genuine owls and the mild owls. Very rare are the genuine larks, they're very rare, uh, who sleep at 7 p.m. and wake up at 2 in the morning. About 0.025% of the population. Another rare body clock are what we call free runners. So their body clocks get later and later, one hour every day. So let's go back to night owls. Night owls, through no fault of their own, are naturally wired to feel sleepy after midnight and wake up close to midday. Statistics show about 1% to 2% of the population have this condition. Interestingly, from the age of 13, teenagers also become temporary owls. (laughs) So a study we did in Australia of about 1,000 kids, high school kids, showed that close to 50% of them are actually owls. So when when your teenager is sleeping and waking waking up late, they're not deliberately doing it to annoy you. (laughs) So let's talk about body clocks for a moment. All organisms, plants, humans, animals, sorry, uh, insects, birds, mammals, worms, cats, dogs, they all have body clocks. You know that at 6.07 in the morning, your cat will try to wake you up for a feed. (laughs) It runs on time unless we shift to daylight savings. (laughs) In humans, we have a master clock deep inside the hypothalamus of the brain. It's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or the SCN. It's the size of a pinhead, 20,000 neurons, and it controls the timing of our sleep, our waking up, our alertness, our drowsiness, when hormones are secreted, moods, peak physical performance, and when you do your number ones and twos. (laughs) Our master clock's timing is strongly influenced by the sun. Early morning sun sets the time for organisms. And in the evening, in the absence of bright light, melatonin, also known as the dark hormone, is released. Melatonin tells the body to prepare for sleep in an hour or two. So for many of us, melatonin is released around 9 p.m., which makes us feel a little sleepy around 10 or 11 p.m. For teenagers, another species, (laughs) melatonin is released, naturally delayed, at least by two hours. 
so which makes them sleepy around 11 p.m. or later, which then delays their waking up time. And in the past 200 years, with light bulbs, artificial light, powerful LED and halogen lamps, and more recently with bright smartphones and devices, our brains and sleep patterns are now confused. So blue light is worse for teenagers who are constantly on their screens before they sleep. Let's go back to night owls. Why are their clocks set later than most of us? Number one, we know that uh, in chronobiology, which is the field of science of biological clocks, that there are genes that code for the timing of our body clocks. So now genes are now being identified that's responsible for delayed sleep phase or owls or for your clocks or for everyone's clocks. So their clocks are slightly different from most of us. And I can see owls run in family. So I, if I have a patient who is an owl, most of the time there will be family members clustered as owls. And owls actually may be more sensitive to bright light, more sensitive than us. So bright light in the evening wakes them awake. It, it wakes them up, stimulates them, and alerts them. So because, because owls appear to be more sensitive to the effects of bright light at night, blasting their eyes also again with gadgets and devices further delay their sleep. So what are the consequences of owls? We laugh about owls, we laugh about larks, but there are huge consequences. Um, there's health consequences. Many of them are chronically fatigued. They have metabolic issues, weight gain issues, diabetes, and a host of other physical problems because they're constantly sleep deprived. We're not even talking about psychological consequences. Owls tend to have higher rates of depression, low self-confidence. When it comes to work, many of them poor uh, work, uh, their work performance is poor, particularly in the morning. Kids are falling asleep the first two, three hours of school. Yeah. I'm not even talking about relationship dramas, especially if an owl marries a lark. <laughs> it actually can, can make the relationship stronger because they don't see each other. So why don't we just tell owls to go to bed 10 p.m., force themselves to get up at 6 in the morning, just muscle it through? It's like telling all of you who have an average clock to go to bed at 6 p.m., sleep, and wake up at 2 to work. Are there options for night owls? Fortunately, there are. So for teenagers, there, there, there are a few schools now in Australia, in the US, and in the UK that have later school start times. And they've shown huge benefits for teenagers when it comes to their school performance, truancy, and even their moods. We also can trick the brain, trick the brain of owls temporarily to make them sleep earlier. So one technique, is to avoid bright light after sunset. You dim the lights, you use blue light blockers, you use night modes in your gadgets. For some of my patients, my prescription is no devices by 6 p.m., which is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then another way to trick the brain uh, to make them sleepy is melatonin strategically timed. So we calculate the time they have to take melatonin to help them go to sleep. We can also trick the brain for them to wake up earlier. So this is using bright light in the morning. Um, usually the sun is the best source, 100,000 lux, that's really powerful, but New Zealand is not consistent with the sun. <laughs> so we use light boxes. We have gadgets, boxes of light with LEDs, and even light visors. But they have to use it again at a particular time. We calculate it. And for 30 minutes, they have to be using this bright light. And that can wake them up. So when these tricks work, night owls can sleep before midnight and wake up at 7 in the morning. And for them, this is miraculous. However, these tricks don't work all the time. They work only about 60, 70% of the time, and they're temporary. If they stop melatonin, if they stop bright light treatment, they revert back to owls. So the ideal option, if you ask me, is to allow owls to follow their own body clock. 
I have patients who were lucky enough who were able to reconfigure their work and study time to conform, to conform to their biological rhythm. But not a lot of people can do that. They get up at midday, work in the afternoon and evening, and sleep after midnight, and they feel great. But again, it's not possible for everyone. So the bottom line is we all have different body clocks, but the majority has dictated to everyone what time we should work and go to school. Our society unwittingly discriminates against night owls. So for the night owls out there, don't listen to people when they call you lazy. Listen to your body clock instead. Thank you. <laughs>